Allison Carr, Rob Waddell, Desiree Ramirez, Paul Wagel. All four enjoy productive, active lives, and they all had their lives saved or dramatically transformed by a stem cell transplant. To see them thrive today is why scientists, researchers, and doctors have dedicated their lives and billions of dollars to stem cell research. Ultimately, biomedical research is about developing better ways of caring for people who have pain and injury and disease. The earliest indications of adult stem cells came back in the early 1900s. Then in the 1950s, doctors discovered they could cure some forms of cancer with stem cells from bone marrow. Things like leukemias, anemias, and so on. Autoimmune diseases has seen an explosion in terms of successful treatments. But the ones that tend to fire up people's imaginations more are when you start to repair a spinal cord injury or stroke repair. Now with adult stem cell applications, being able to get that person up walking, living a full life. The extraordinary treatments listed by Dr. Prentice were achieved using adult stem cells, harvested from bone marrow, umbilical cord blood, or the patient's own mature body. But just before the turn of the 21st century, scientists made a breakthrough with a new kind of stem cell. Named embryonic stem cells because they were harvested from human embryos, these stem cells had seemingly unlimited potential to create any organ and treat any disease. The expectations for embryonic stem cells were astronomical. But with the excitement came a sobering realization. To advance embryonic stem cell research, scientists learned that the embryos would be destroyed in the process of harvesting the stem cells. This created a moral and ethical dilemma for doctors and the scientific community. The research was allowed to continue, but after 20 years, the ethical problem wasn't even the biggest challenge. They're hard to tame, if you will, to produce the type of cell replacement for damaged tissue. They tend to form tumors instead of forming the type of tissue you want. And those tumors are malformations of multiple different kinds of tissues. They're called teratomas. Dr. Shirley likens it to asking a home builder to come into your house and repair a plumbing issue. You'd think the builder would know how to fix a leak, but all he knows how to do is build from scratch. They come into your house and make all kinds of stuff you don't even need, right? You have plumbing going out your window. That, that builder, if you said, I want you to build me a new house, well, that's what they'd be able to do. But you come in and put them in your house for your one problem, it's a disaster. Every time stem cells derived from embryos are transplanted into humans, the coveted breakthrough treatments have failed. Many researchers continue to look for the key to unlock the potential of embryonic stem cells, but some have found the ethical and moral issues too troubling to ignore. And I learned about this technique called pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, or PGD, in which families that were undergoing in vitro fertilization could have their embryos undergo genetic testing. And if they determined that they didn't like the genotype of that child, they would discard them or they would be donated to research where then they would be destroyed. It just it was devastating to me because to me, every, every embryo from day one was precious. Paul Wagel is a clinical ethicist for a major Midwestern hospital system. At what cost are we willing to find the, these cures or potential cures? We're basically saying some humans get to decide what happens to other humans without their permission for the benefit of themselves. Do we want to live in a world where we can do anything as long as it has good outcomes? Where we can sacrifice one person for another? A heated debate between opponents and supporters of embryonic stem cell research erupted quickly and has continued for years. But in 2006, a Japanese scientist and his team made a breakthrough that seemed to eliminate the ethical question from the stem cell debate. Dr. Shinya Yamanaka discovered induced pluripotent stem cells, or iPS cells. He found that he could add some factors to an ordinary cell not any stem cell, just an ordinary cell like a skin cell, and induce them to look and act 
like an embryonic stem cell. But they don't come from embryos. And no embryo is destroyed in order to make them. In just 15 years, the study of iPS cells has led to a number of discoveries in drug testing and basic research, even a few early treatments in humans that appear promising. So I think the end is in sight for embryonic. There's still going to be some people that want to hang on to it. But if we're focused on the patients and we're focused on new treatments, it's going to be the adult stem cells and the iPS cells that are going to continue to move to the fore. And in the next 20 years, I see more optimization in the generation and delivery of adult stem cell therapies. We're going to be obtaining um, more information about how to optimize this therapy, and it's only going to improve and get better and save more lives.